Hi, my name's Jamie Martin. I'm about to go and see Chris Parsons, who's a home shopping and media specialist. So here I am with Chris Parsons. Chris is a professional consultant in the area of setting up TV channels. And uh, I'd like to introduce you to Chris. Hi, nice to meet you. So Chris, to date, how many TV channels have you been involved with or have you have you been you know, conceptualised from you know from the, the start of the idea to actually getting the signal up to satellites and down to our set-top boxes? Well, including um, launches, relaunches, sales, um, rebranding, I've done, I haven't written them all down recently, but probably uh, in the region of about 25. Right, okay. That's so, quite a few. obviously setting up a TV channel from scratch is no mean feat because you're taking on an awful lot of overhead. I mean, Give me an idea of the scale of what it costs to start a TV channel, say from something simple um, right up to you know a large broadcast. Well, the your main technical costs um, are involved in the delivery of the channel. So you have to buy satellite space, for example. Um, most people launch their channels on Sky, and um, it's the easiest platform to launch on. So you go to a provider such as. BT or uh, Archiva or Globecast and you buy a, a, a chunk of satellite capacity. Um, it's bought by the megabit, uh, megabit per second and most channels broadcasted at three or three and a half megabits per second and it's in the region of a hundred thousand euros a year a megabit. So you're looking at about 300, 350,000 euros a year, so obviously it's slightly more expensive now than it was a few years ago because of the exchange rate, uh, to uh, just to have your capacity. Then you need to get your signal up to that bit of capacity on the satellite. So you have to pay a playout provider, uh, or you can play out yourself, which means you have a, a technology cost. But if you pay a uh, don't want the capex, you pay a playout provider. You're probably looking in the region of four to ten thousand pounds, depending on what you're doing. If it's a very simple shopping channel, not much programming, not much ingest, it's a lower cost. The more complicated. Expensive it gets. Okay, so in simple terms, I need to pay for a road with BT to get up to the satellite. Yeah. And I need to have something that's playing the tape or taking, or if I'm live, I'm going to have a live studio and then, yeah. and then that's converting through a multiplexer and then going up to the uh, satellite and coming down to a set top box. Yeah. Um, are there any other costs involved, like with Sky themselves? Indeed. You can get it up to the satellite uh, and you can play it up to the satellite, but if you don't pay Sky, then no one can see it. Uh, unless you're one of the very small few people who have their own set-top box and program it themselves, and, and there are, they are out there because they always pick up on the channels before they launch, um, but there's probably only about 20 viewers, which isn't a particularly good business model. <laughs> um, so you, you pay Sky in the region uh, of £80,000 a year uh, for access to their EPG. Costs vary. Well, the cost is, uh, What's an EPG? The EPG, sorry, is the Electronic Programming Guide. That is the um, that's the graphic shell that is put over at the top of all of the channels to allow people to navigate around Sky. Uh, all of the digital platforms have one in one shape or another, whether they're digital cable or whether they're digital satellite. And the analog uh, ones used to have them as well. It's essentially just the, the, the shell that says the name of the channel, the program that's on air, and then you can look forward you know, in the future to see what else is coming up. So Chris, why have um, Sky as a platform shut down the, um, the new channel launches? The reason that they've given, which is obviously the only information we have, is that their, their sets on boxes are no longer able to cope with the influx of channels. They used to launch at a rate of four channels every week, uh, and they would launch channels on a Monday. So obviously that's a capacity of up to 200 channels a year that you could launch. They didn't do a few around Christmas. So that's an enormous strain on their uh, technical infrastructure. Now the modern set-top boxes can deal with this quite happily. However, there are boxes out there that have been there since day one of Sky Digital. Uh, so we're talking boxes that are seven, eight years old. and they're claiming that there are constraints within the technology that means that they can't launch any quicker. Now, there has to be a reason, but you know, there may be the other reasons behind it, because obviously it's in Sky's interest to take these channels on, because every single one of them is going to pay them £80,000. So you know, they're restricting their own growth. So what they've done is they've slowed the launch queue down, they're now doing two a week, and they've stopped any more people from entering the launch queue, which means that by the middle of 2009, roughly, there will be no more channel launches and if you want to set up a channel on Sky you're going to have to go and buy one that is already on air and rebrand it for your own channel. Chris, yeah, it's really interesting. We've, so we talked about Sky which is a platform. If, are there any other platforms in the UK that I could broadcast on if I wanted to? 
Sky is absolutely the easiest that you can broadcast on, even with the restrictions of the, of the launch queue. It's obviously digital terrestrial, which is free view, uh, the, and there is the Virgin uh, cable network. There are a few smaller cable networks that you can also access, and then in a few months, uh, FreeSat will be launched, which is another satellite system. It will operate in a similar way to FreeView in that when you are the consumer, you will buy the satellite dish and you'll buy the box, and then you don't pay anything else going forwards. FreeSat have a restricted number of channels that they're launching to start with, and it's pretty much restricted to channels that are already on air. FreeView is massively constrained by the amount of bandwidth, and we talked about bandwidth earlier and the, 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 the space that you broadcast your channel on, and they have about 50 channels on there at the moment, many of which are not over a 24 hour day part. You could have one 24 hour piece of bandwidth that's actually three channels. One runs from midnight until eight, one runs from eight until four in the afternoon, and one runs from four until midnight. So trying to get on Freeview and to get your own channel on Freeview is an extraordinarily expensive exercise. I know of a channel that was uh, for sale last year that was looking for 12 million pounds a year for five years for a lease. So that's 60 million pounds just to broadcast on Freeview. But it's the fastest growing of all of the platforms. They've got 16, 17 million sets of boxes out there, 10 million thereabouts and, unique and homes. And am I right in thinking it's growing? Because whenever you go and buy a new TV, it has their receiving equipment embedded into it. Absolutely, and you also are, well, you, we all have the impending um, analog switch off. As of 2012, we will be a digital nation, and everyone will need some form of digital television in order to watch the BBC One, BBC Two, the currently that they receive analog. At that point, the analog capacity will be freed up, so what, it takes a lot more capacity to broadcast an analog channel than it does for digital. So at that point, there may be opportunities to get onto Freeview when they release the analog capacity, but it depends on the you know the, the technical guys where they choose to release that. To. Okay, so um, baseline costs. If you want to launch on Sky, you're looking at an annual overhead, you know, a kind of what I'd call a run rate of probably about three hundred, three hundred fifty thousand pounds a year in hard costs. You're probably looking at three hundred fifty odd thousand pounds a year in hard cost um, of technology, and probably eighty grand to Sky as well. Yeah. So that's before you employ anyone and before you have any content. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And um, for for Freeview. Well, for Freeview, if you can get the capacity, it's a, it's a private negotiation. There is no there is no Ofcom governance of Freeview. You have to go to someone and say, "I want some capacity from you." And that could be, if you want an hour a day, you could end up paying a million pounds a year. You could end up paying 500,000 if it's in the middle of the night. It really depends. That is a commercial negotiation to be had between two businesses, and there's no one governing that. Some people are paying over the odds. Some people have got great deals. It's, it's one of those things. What type of people launch channels? <laughs> Anyone with enough money and enough willpower can launch a TV channel. That's one of the nice things about the open access to the Sky platform. I know of people who have decent property portfolios who've remortgaged their properties and launched d dedicated channels, you know, just something that specifically interests them. There are golf channels, there are movie channels, there are shopping channels, an area that I've worked uh, extensively in. Well, give me, um, say, uh, give me an example of, uh, of, of, of the, the actual business side of a pre-recorded shopping channel. I think, I think it's called infomercial channel. With an infomercial channel, you um, you acquire uh, product to sell. One of the reasons that people do a lot of shopping uh, on television is because the advertising model for uh, editorial programs is very hard to make money off small number of eyeballs that you get on the smaller channels that people turn to shopping. If you're running a, an infomercial channel, you actually buy product and you are essentially a retailer, but your shop window is Sky or Freeview or one of the other platforms and you're advertising a phone number that people can ring up and buy directly. So as with any retailer you need to have your warehouse and you need to have your method of dispatching and, and obviously therefore you need a call centre to take your calls. And there are a huge number of product manufacturers that will actually make their own infomercial and their own program to go with their product. So you can go to trade fairs in Miami and Vegas and Monte Carlo and meet product people and they'll try and sell you their product and their show and then you just need to re-edit it to make sure it's compliant with the UK market and the UK is much more stringent on, on air compliance than other countries and you need to get the product in and then you run your tape and hope that people pick the phone up. So